<laughs> Decided to cut the uh, behind the scenes chat short, gents. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the Leading Crypto Happy Hump Day. Uh, it's uh, CVO Crypto, Magic Internet Money, and Burmax. Together, we are Leading Crypto, and we're going to go over uh, everything uh, for the market today. So, looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. I think somebody flipped the switch. The XRP is the term, right? When you get a couple percent pump, uh, potentially. I think XRP. it was that live on TikTok yesterday we watched. I was just about to say, I think, I think that that was it. XRP sees a move, it's the end of the move. So, yeah, uh, they, they caught wind of the drama. It did, man. That was, a, that was an interesting show. I, I don't think, uh, you know, that, that was definitely a feature uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, for anybody that didn't see, it was Zach Rector and Dark Horse, I believe. So, if you, uh, I don't yeah. know if that's possible to watch somewhere, but it was some guy recorded it. Some guy named Okay. Gordon. Yeah, so uh, that was heated, man. That was uh, that was good. That was good stuff. I enjoyed it. Um, always oh, fun yeah. to get a little entertainment and a little drama in the cryptos. Not that there's any shortage of drama. Really, there isn't. But uh, that that on just straight debate. Is. Like, uh, like you know, you just get you get Zach Rector going, man, and that's that's a you got a debate on your hands for sure <laughs> with anybody. Yeah, well, so. Speaking um, of price and something going on, uh, I heard Max's alert going off to alert me to jump to the charts, basically, because we are getting a little bit of action finally. So it's moving. I'm going to I'm going to hop into Bitcoin real quick so we can go through the levels before they're hit. <laughs> um, yeah. So really, really simple chart, guys. I have not changed the levels on this. You can see I have three alerts. These are actually just uh, additional take profits for me on my long. You can see that I missed this one by $16. Uh, really focusing on this gold pocket and quarter two low. Uh, but I've already gotten three take profits on this trade already from 16.6. So for me, it's one of those things where um, if I miss it by 15 or $16, I'll let it, the trade get invalidated and, and it is what it is. We've already we've already made some money on the trade, right? So um, in terms of where you're rejecting from, you're basically just front running the gold pocket right now. Um, you can see you've got like a local high right over here that you haven't quite taken. This is kind of why I put my... Um, my my next take profit where I did at seventeen five fifteen is dollar fifty above this local high. That's all it was. Um, so I haven't seen a significant high in the order flow yet. I was watching on the millions chart yesterday, and there was nothing that really made me think that this was a significant high uh, that we won't come up and take the high again at some point after maybe some consolidation. The question is, you know, where do we go wrong in this case? So I'm um, straight away looking at the high time frames. I think it would be a pretty big um, red flag if we start losing 17,174. And that's this level right here that we've been talking about for uh, quite some time. You can see it was a perfect back test after we did flip the level here and a move into that resistance. And the same with like 16,611. So those are the two basic, you know, breaker levels that I gave you guys a couple weeks ago. And I think losing, excuse me, sorry, I had energy drink this morning and well, I'm not used to the carbonation. Um, but I think losing this level is kind of like your first big warning sign because then you get a bounce from this, you know, 16, eight region. And the question is, you know, do you make a lower high and is this coming back down like the bottom of the range that could definitely happen. Um, we just need to be ready for it. If it does now in terms of local stuff, you, you've got some very interesting, not interesting, very easy price action. In my opinion, uh, what time frame is that? Is that all of January? I bet that is all of January. Let me get rid of that real quick. Yeah, it is. So very simply put, gold pocket, golden mean ratio at the 382 here at 17,356. Uh, and looking down to the previous day point of control at 17,250. And that previous day low in VAL right around this weekly swing failure pattern down here. So again, that 17,174 also showing you it's the bottom of yesterday's session, meaning that yeah, if we were to come all the way through yesterday's session and lose this area, I would... I think you'd fill this in and we'd probably come down to, you know, that 16.8. And that's a big drop from where we are, in my opinion. So um, I'm not really looking for that just yet, but it's not out of the question by any means. So locally, you do have this gold pocket here at the previous day point of control. You did have a Dalton setup today. If you're in the group, you know exactly what that means. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, all you're doing is closing outside of the prior day session getting acceptance back into it. And then we know the statistics of reaching the previous day point of control most of the time. Um, I believe Max was watching this low for a potential swing failure pattern. Um, you know, to me, I think after you've already tapped it, you know, there, there was your trade right there. Now you didn't quite reject from the daily open, but uh, close enough. So um, it gave you a nice entry for this. So I was talking to one of the newer members in the group in the Bitcoin chat. I think he was looking for shorts like in this region and we just hadn't quite made that high yet. 
And I was like, I'm really looking for that 17,500 to like $600 level still, which we, we pretty much got there. We front ran the actual gold pocket by like $60. You've got the previous day high here. You had a really nice move above it. And then, you know, order flow didn't really give me an entry, at least not on the volume chart. I don't know if Max had one potentially up there, but I did not. Um, the only thing I can see now is just bear div on the five mil on this most recent uh, move up before, you know, nuking down into the range. Um, but just from an invalidation standpoint, you've taken the high, closed below it, you even back tested it here on the 10 minute chart, right? So you can see you have a really nice back test here. And down you go. And then the daily open essentially is resistance here. Now, I think the gold pocket is likely just above this somewhere. I imagine it's coming in in this region. Um, but you know, for all intents and purposes, you're basically rejecting off the daily open here. So you're coming back to the day open, it's being defended, can't reclaim it. All you've done is swung fell this local high even. And one would be the best trade is a short in this instance, even though it has order flow, in my opinion, hasn't given us an entry yet. Um, no real sign of weakness outside of the the potential bear div that did just play out a little bit here on local time frames. Um, so to me, it was very obvious yesterday as we were making our move. I think we were down in this region still. Uh, I was telling you guys uh, in that live that we have not done anything that warrants a sign of weakness yet. Um, but however, I'm not looking to add any longs here to get the last of this move because, you know, it's just not worth it. Unless you find like a specific intraday setup and your risk to reward is really good. And you have a really tight invalidation. You can take trades like that. Sure. Um, you just have to understand that, you know, if you're not doing that, just YOLOing into a long position is not a good idea when you're this close to resistance. Um, and it's not a good idea to just start shorting blindly either because we don't know what's going to happen when we get up to that resistance. So, you know, it, it's better just to gauge the reaction and wait. And I think this gave you a couple different entries if you wanted it in terms of a short today. So uh, Bitcoin basically previous day high would have been the best entry stop loss above the new daily high. Or you could have came back to this right here and shorted the swing fail of this local high. Um, basically, once you've swung fail this high, all you're looking to do is see the daily open be lost and then down into the previous day range. So um, first target is always going to be your prior day average or the pivot, however you refer to it. it. doesn't matter to me. That's all it is, is the average of the prior day session, 17,356. And then you're looking down to this gold pocket at like 17, uh, 250 to 17,266 um, would be the next target. Uh, invalidation on that's going to be again stop loss above the local high or above the day open however you want to do it uh, and you're you're looking to fulfill these targets and it's not a death sentence to the rally by any means i do think on a higher broader time frame when you look at this you know this is one of those things where i i saw it the other day i can't remember who it was it was one of the bigger creators uh, they do a lot of the pattern trading they were calling this a um, an ascending triangle which i'm not a huge fan of patterns but you know, you can definitely kind of see how it's forming. I don't particularly like it as an ascending triangle because you're spending so much time filling out the bottom here and not coming back up to the hot, top, the high and filling out the mid range. So um, maybe if it is an ascending triangle, we get that quick move up and then you spend some time filling this out a little bit more. Uh, I don't know what the volume profile looks like on that either. Let's take a peek. Yeah, you can see that you've got a pretty heavy... Um, volume profile to the downside, meaning uh, you can see we've spent a majority of our time down here, right? So if this were to be an ascending triangle, the bullish theory here, this is an ascending triangle. Let me get rid of these alerts because I know you guys don't need to see all these lines. I just feel like it's it's even making my eyes hurt a little bit. So we are going to get rid of those. Let's say that you guys wanted this to be an ascending triangle. You're really going to need to spend some time filling this section of the chart out, um, making it a little bit more balanced. So I would imagine that if we did get that secondary push up into this resistance zone, you know, you've got a daily naked point of control, your quarter one pivots up here, daily swing failure pattern from the local high on the shark. Um, you're probably going to root around and trade above 16.8 for a while. You're going to have to stay above 16.8, fill this out, put in some kind of a accumulation, so to speak. Maybe there's a, a stray wick down into this like daily or yearly open, excuse me, but I wouldn't want to live down there too long because I think once you flip 16.8 ish, give or take, right here, this like weekly NPOC, you know, this isn't a very good looking profile for continuation of the upside. I mean, I know that the structure is here, but you know, it's an extreme sign of weakness, in my opinion, if you were to come all the way back down to the range lows. And we talked about this with these two lows right here, where we said, if we take these lows, I'm really not looking for that third swing failure pattern. I'm looking to probably take this low and challenge into this one, which I don't see any reason why we wouldn't make a new low in that instance. So, um, 
I think holding on to this region of the chart, which we've discussed previously, is going to be pretty paramount for the overall rally. And like I said, I am still holding long because there's no reason to close that long just yet. But you are going to want to hang on to this. And you can, you know, you can extend this over and just look at price action. And you can see why, you know, this is your last market structure range in terms of consolidation. So if you find your way back inside of this range, what are you likely to do? Well, you're, you're very likely to start targeting some of these lows that did not get taken. You don't have, you know, you, you're just building up stop losses all the way up. And so that's when you get that cascade effect. You start losing those, that ground, those guys end up getting stopped out. They're forced out of their positions, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they're forced to sell, right? And if you have incoming sell pressure at the same time because of a sign of weakness or whatever it may be, maybe there's some news catalyst. Um, that's how a move like that can get out of hand. Just like to the upside though, we've talked about this. I do think, excuse me, if you flip this like gold pocket region all the way up to like 17.8, this area of the chart, I think if this gets flipped to support, um, you know, or 18.1, uh, if we're being really impulsive is taken out, I, I think there's a good chance you could come up to this, you know, 19K region um, fairly quickly. I think that's a, a fairly quick move in that instance. Um, you know, but for now, I would like to see this come up here, maybe take these local highs at some point. But I, I think we're going to consolidate around between box to box, fill out this profile more. And that would look healthier to me if we were looking at this in terms of like a triangle, you know, and if we were just to draw it up, how I'm sure everyone in the space is drawing it, something like this, right, is what we're looking at. And so you can see that would also give us a little more time in here. You want to fill this out, hang on to this level of support. And, you know, things are things look good then. Uh, that would look good to me, but otherwise uh, it's level to level guys, no significant high in terms of order flow. In my opinion has been put in. I think Max will probably go over that and he may differ in opinion. I don't know. So we'll see. I haven't spent too much time on the chart today, but you know, that's the analysis, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty much the same analysis we've been giving you guys. It's just now the, the levels are a little more relevant because we're actually hitting some of them. Now we spent a few weeks going pretty sideways and boring. So, um, yeah, that's all I've got. And keep it short on Bitcoin anyway. Take this off you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go over um, the high that was put in last night. We just went over it in the stream and we spotted something that, you know, is one of the ways that you could have identified. Granted, it didn't give you a trade, and I agree with Magic. Audible hasn't given you a setup here. You know, even at the highs, you don't get, you're not getting your trap traders. You're actually having just shorts piling, which, you know, doesn't give you trap traders or position changing hands, is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't give you an SFP, you know, from an order flow standpoint, you know, you wouldn't expect what occurred here to you know, take place. But what you can see is when you, a lot of CVD divergence, you're trading when, uh, you know, it's higher uh, for uh, when the CVD is higher from a uh, you know, previous high and yet the high is lower. But you can see here, we've got the opposing thing take place, which is like normal for RSI. This is like the normal divergence. If you're ever trading an RSI divergence, you can see here that the CVD uh, total amount is actually much lower than it was when we last made this high. So what does that show you? Well, it shows you the lack of interest from the buyers, which is not what you want to see when, you, when you're expecting it to take you to you know, new highs. So it's that's the way that you could have looked at this and kind of gauged that you know, this whole thing here was a really weak attempt of taking off and you know, going even higher, well, maybe just to the golden pocket, but you know, it was a weak attempt of you know, taking it higher. And then, yes, you did get the SFP, but from an order flow standpoint, you really didn't get an entry on it. But unfortunately, it came at 5 a.m. for me, so there's no chance. Now, the only trade that I actually was awake and actually did take, and we went over this in the stream, was this uh, short from here. Reason being, simply SFP this high. Uh, it was a weak attempt at moving up. The volume is much lower than than the uh, the attempt we made here, like considerable uh low um, difference in volume. Sorry, just got a message and it put me off. Um, a considerable lower volume in this attempt than we did here. In the build-up, in the open interest, you know, everything was weak about this attempt. Then you SFP'd, got back below the um, the daily open, 
And then I was complaining in the stream for the amount of time that trades are taking to play out now. Um, we were waiting for the level. I was looking for a potential long here, but it was, was my, you know, the main thing was my TP. And that is now hit because it's tapped the pivot. But yeah, I don't really see a uh, an SFP trade coming up here. I don't, literally, it's not there. But look at that. That is a, a thing of beauty there. You actually come and tap the previous day view up close. Now, I mentioned it a while ago that you guys should be keeping your eye on the previous day uh, view up closes. That is pretty neat, actually. Didn't tap it quite, but close enough for it to, uh, to make a difference. But yeah, it's, literally, it's been rather quiet overall. The open interest has been iffy on the move, but it's been, you know, it has been increasing. So overall, it's an it's an okay move. It's not the strongest. Uh, we got asked the question, how can we keep having spikes of open interest? You know, dropping, you know, it really does drop, like here, significantly drop by 5 million. And it's purely the fact that any traders that did enter down here, and you all rem remember me saying many times when we were trading, all of this for the past few uh, days, weeks, uh, and what have you, there has been a lack of shorts in, into the market. So I don't really see much fuel to the upside. Now, this is just taking out whatever fuel that we did have. So, you know, it's not the best thing to spot if we're really expecting, you know, a, one of them very rapid rises in price. I just don't believe it to be coming uh, purely because there was no trap shorts at the bottom. Now, of course, things can change, buyers can come in, but there's a lot of, um, I, don't, I don't really see it. But do I expect a big pullback? Not really. Uh, you know, there's not that many trap longs in this instance. There's actually way more shorts that entered here. And you can really tell from the, the way that the uh, divergence has come down with it in, uh, open interest increasing now, as long as it doesn't give them too far to take profit from. Well, what this price action is doing now is drawing more in, you know, getting more people, um, out, taking people out of their longs that have entered here to then put, take it higher, to then take out the shorts that are probably thinking, you know, this is it now. I've caught the short. I'm going to leave it and walk away from the price and come back in two weeks and make me a load of money because there's a ton of shorts that are entering here. So, you know, if we do get a retracement here, I don't expect it to be too... Uh, damaging, I guess, to the price. I don't expect it to be too you know, big, purely because you know, I, I, we've just from run the level. It's not a strong high from or from any standpoint. You know, you can really zoom into the price action and look at the charts. And we've got one there. So that actually is for, for on, a, uh, on a 10 tick. But from an, a, a uh, TPO standpoint, you know, it's not the strongest high. Um, and the fact that it was made overnight i kind of wanted to get taken again so yeah hopeful that it comes up and uh, from a tpo standpoint it says theory says it will if you really zoom in you can find that it's that high is okay actually but um yeah purely because of the shorts coming in i do expect it to go a bit higher but save you rambling i'll uh I'll hand over to you cvo wherever you are There I am. <laughs> All right. Good stuff, sir. Sirs. Uh, so, yeah, just threw up the same uh, ascending triangle here for Ethereum that uh, Magic was kind of alluding to on Bitcoin as well. So because I have to imagine that most are looking at this also. Um, you know, interesting to know we've made it back to uh, the area where we came into last month. Right. So once again, for ETH, uh, this was previous month uh on news alone, right? Looking at that kind of a time frame was a CPI data, you know, shot right up at the time. This was our monthly pivot from last month. Uh, came back to it on the Fed meeting date, right? So uh, loading shorts, right? Essentially at this region, it was very interesting to see we didn't take the high over here. Um, so uh, once again, still have not done that quite yet if we're going to do it. But, you know, you got the pullback and then, yeah, you've been putting in the same structure, right? This ascending uh, triangle. You've got now three touches on the high side, um, potentially, you know, pull back down uh, to the region of 1230. Right. So for anybody looking at it in that sense, um, you know, it, it it poses an interesting you know setup here, because if you do get a little break to the upside, uh, I would imagine that everyone's going to be hopping on this, uh, assuming that it's going to go, you know, pretty pretty decent move. Uh, however, uh, to throw on a couple of other things on this little idea here is that one thing is to note 
to the downside here right now we're holding our quarterly pivot right so that's 13 21 uh you know shot up and we're just kind of bouncing in between the two losing this region we do have an untapped weekly uh pivot for this week so once again average of price down low uh pretty decent statistical target for the week uh to come back down to this is about 1260 and uh, then that would be you know nearing the bottom trend line if you're going to be looking at this as that ascending triangle uh, but to throw on a couple of ranges here right so just kind of put some confluences along across the board here we've got all right, we're going to do this one so this is a uh, you know the larger range that i'm looking at at the moment and uh i'll take these trend lines off and just want to note that same or one idea here right is that you know you come up and you actually take these highs uh once and for all uh, for the last couple of weeks here and this would actually be dating back two months um what you'd really be doing is running into a high time frame uh range high right so this is from last quarter uh and that does come in about 1260 you know give or take you know potentially have a little deviation to the upside uh and you know really want to see how things kind of transpire if you hit it but that is uh something to be aware of is that we are just below uh the overall value area high right now uh for the last quarter right so uh when you think about things like a potential you know ascending triangle that you know you see a lot of times you get those uh people will consider them fake outs it's, uh, you know, times we could see something potentially like this, right? Where you actually come back through, get that break, um, and then you actually come back inside, right? Where you just get the deviation of the range, re-enter, uh, and, uh, you know, potentially anybody's going to be looking at this as, you know, breakout back test of the trend line. Uh, and you really just want to be paying attention at that time if something like that happens, right? Super speculative idea at the moment, but I just want to kind of throw it up there for, uh, you know, a little bit of confluence along this pattern uh, that is kind of just like, you know, building up in this uh in this range right so at the moment looking for that uh you know once again weekly pivot down here is the eq of the range as well uh, you've obviously got the point of control down here which is at the moment a local gold pocket uh so you know a natural target to the downside is going to be this point of control either way and then uh, obviously if this is where we're turning around you got the gold pocket that lines up with that region as well um you've got potential uh for this to have been a uh bearish bat right here on ethereum as well right even though it's uh, just about come up and invalidated that so if we do push a little higher you know then that would take that out but just once again another idea of confluence you can see that the b leg would be you know one of our major targets once again back down here by the gold pocket point of control uh definitely you know the weekly pivot which uh is Decent little move below us, right? So four or five percent, definitely, uh, definitely a decent little move compared to what we were dealing with for the last few weeks, uh, where you're just getting like a one or two percent move over the course of a week. Uh, so that is an area to be concerned, uh, considered with, right? So twelve sixty, twelve seventeen, um, and uh, and then from there, right? Unless we, you know, to the upside, it really is the same, you know, uh, areas we've been looking for, similar to magic. We are actually back to them, so. Uh, it's a time to be paying attention taking longs from this level you know these regions can be a little risky and tricky because potentially we do only have a little bit more upside before we get a decent pullback right uh, if if we're not pulling back now um, downside for me would be starting to lose the quarterly at 12 16 uh, potentially a back test and then you know we'd be looking down at 12 60 and, and then this you know point of control gold pocket so that's kind of the in, uh, immediate uh, if you weren't looking for a short position up in this region, you know, this would be that short idea here. Otherwise, uh, you know, this is support. So you can't really short right into support. Uh, you would really want to look for that loss and then the back test potentially. Uh, otherwise, you know, looking to see if we claim this range uh, to the upside. Right. And then if we do, uh, we do have some target uh, above us. It'd just be interesting to see if we actually get them. But, you know, like I said, the whole space is more than likely looking at this ascending triangle. So, uh that that playing out is is uh you know just something to be aware of right the amount of times we see those play out uh you know it's it's possible but uh usually that doesn't occur uh to the to the tune of uh, everybody winning that move uh if it if it happens so as far as any uh you know more pullback idea here we got uh like i said you got the q4 range right here another thing that considers you throw on the uh, high time frame regression as well for this. And this does, once again, not that this is gospel. Uh, you can see we deviate that as well, but just a little, uh, you know, confluence above us as well, right at the value area high <clears throat> or potentially, you know, running back into it in this region. But uh, that does come in uh, just above us also. 
and that has gotten a lot of the price action uh, pretty nicely over the last quarter. We have a structural range here, right, just from the November dump here. And you can see um, I bring this up because if we do actually make our way back down to the weekly pivot uh, below us, 1260, um, potential to actually, you know, rotate this range again uh, is, is on the table, right? So because we'd be re-entering uh, this previous range here. You got point of control uh, as the EQ as well. Uh, and then you could potentially run it all the way back down value very low. And then some of our lower targets would come back in a, into play. So uh, it's just things to be aware of if we start making our way down, you know, similar to, you know, how Magic was saying, I don't think this is necessarily the death sentence of the, of the rally, but just be, you know, aware of areas that if we start coming back into them, you know, things can change, right? So um, weekly pivot, you know, for the time being, being, you know, essentially a decent low area. I mean, I guess you would really consider this one at 1236, uh, an area you really don't want to lose as far as making a new lower low, right? In that sense. Uh, but, you know, coming back and losing the weekly pivot, re-entering this range, you know, I would imagine that we're going to take a stroll back to this point of control region and see how the volume's kind of weak in this region. So maybe, you know, root around in there for a bit. Um, if that happens, or like I said, you know, updates will be, you know, thrown out, but we'd be, uh, you know, making new, you'd make a, a lower low in that aspect, uh, and then potentially, you know, make a little, make a little downtrend on there. So just, uh, things to be aware of, you know, definitely a time to remain pretty neutral. Um, you know, we had a really, really nice, uh, you know, run back to this area, had some really nice, uh, statistical targets along the way. Uh, and what is it? What was this from 1180? What's the dates here? That was christmas so just from actually new year's right that was yeah right there i mean a 15 percent rally out of eth and then obviously that transpired into a really good bunch of moves in the uh, altcoin market morning everybody how you doing over here uh, in the chat there caro nick sales crypto billy billy is everywhere billy you are like uh you're like the crypto um kid i don't even know billy the kid <laughs> dude is like everyone's uh hype man awesome uh so yeah uh, just a little confluence in those areas um one for me is just really paying attention to see how we react at 1260 if we make our way down there in the immediate 1316 is a big one to just pay attention for um and let's see yeah our previous week uh is also right this uh our previous week range is also in this region also and we have yeah, just, you know, same thing. It's just, you know, getting back into this, uh, to this weekly pivot, you're just re-entering a bunch of other ranges here. So uh, just something to know, you know, if we do that, you could have a little bit more potential downside. So we'd really want to see how things react if we get to 1260. You really want to see that bounce uh, potential there. So that's pretty much uh, all I got on ETH, right? And then, you know, if we make it through this region and get that break and it's, uh, you know, legit and you can see an upside, uh, you know, get some upside potential here, then I would be looking for that next, uh, that golden pocket area. Uh, which is like 14, you know, 1400 and change, something of that tune, right? Which is pretty much just this right here. So in that region, um, oh, interesting to note that actually right above us too. Uh, let's throw back on that range. So you got the value area high and you got 0.5 fib right above us. So uh, getting back to the idea of, of a potential slight deviation, right? So let's just say we're living in this little uh, triangle here, uh, make our way down to, you know, 1260, and which is basically the bottom of this trend line now anyways, and you actually run it back and get a nice little break. Uh, this would come up, take the highs, you know, 1377. You'd be living outside of that range as well. Um, but, you know, potential for this to just come up, meet this, and then, you know, come back into the range uh, is there, right? And that would be looked at and viewed as a failed breakout or uh, what have you, but that would just, you know, that's a very decent target to uh, to the upside right above all of our regions. Uh, would come through and take out all of the highs for like the last two months uh, and then potentially you know, as a, another, even if it's just a, a return to the range lows, right? So uh, just something to keep in the, uh, the back of the mind there, right? So all right. But yeah, otherwise, gold pocket to the upside, you know, if, uh, I would also imagine that the idea of, you know, double bottom cup and handle a uh, what's it called? The uh, the goldfish pattern, right, could start be making its way around here. Adam and Eve double bottoms 
uh, we'll start getting thrown around, measured moves, right? Takes us back up to like 1600, um, which once again, I mean, clearing that 0.5 would be probably the, the, the key to that. Um, so I'm not saying that that's out of the question by any means, but these are, these are probably what everyone's gunning for at the moment. So, uh, just a, you know, a run back into that range though, is definitely something that, you know, if we get back in there at 12, you know, losing 1260, uh, return to the lows is definitely on the table. So let's take a look at some other things here, right? So Solana having a, you know, it's just chilling and uh 15 uh, what has it been up to now 1750 uh what a move right so uh one of the biggest areas that you know we were looking for as we came down um personally i missed the uh, bounce off the you know the range low here off the last quarter uh but we were looking for 999 at the time right that was the area we were looking for the claim uh for the move higher uh, natural target was going to be our point of control at 1360 had a couple of pivots in you know in the in the way here and uh you know Took the monthly, uh, I'm sorry, that took this weekly pivot here, you know, held it as support, day open came, took another run to the upside. Originally, uh, I left this on here just to kind of showcase that there was a gold pocket here. It's not a gold pocket now to the downside. This was from our, um, you know, from this high to low, noting that it was coming in right at all the highs here. So I definitely anticipated that to be, you know, met uh, to just knock out all the shorters that were uh, in this region. Anyway, they were shorting here, you know, if they didn't take profits, assuming that we were going straight down from there uh they you know saw their account blow up because this was a 40 percent drop uh, and if they didn't take any profits there just to see it all come back and potentially even get stopped out and actually lose uh, money on that trade from here uh this eq of the range uh is something i'm you know looking to see if we can hold right now we're not doing a great job of that right so we're starting to lose it uh you do have a nice little high that comes in just at about 1745 um to turn this around and, you know, if you get a little push up out of ETH and Bitcoin still a couple more percenters, I would imagine that Solana might get a little, another little run up here. And, you know, you do have a bunch of highs over here or your last high in this region, which does come in at a quarterly pivot. So this is a quarterly average price that has not been uh, met yet. It's 1893. Uh, you also got 1967 uh, and then 2133. And those would be my next major areas to the upside uh, if we get any more. Otherwise, you know, starting a pullback. Uh, you know, this potential, you got your 0.5 uh, comes back down and essentially, you know, meets you where we've been bouncing around this region. Uh, you've also got a gold pocket back down to like 1167. Uh, and then we've got a weekly level back down at uh, actually 999 where we entered in the group. So uh, something like that is one of those cases where, you know, if we came all the way back to this region, same deal as anybody that shorted here, you know, if you were longing from this region, you know, try not to get too greedy on this because it could very easily come right back to where you entered um, and give up all the gains that you had. Right. So by this time, I mean, this was a really big move, even just from the 999 entry. 75 percent currently up 55, you know, overall like 120 uh, percent. That is that is, you know, it's a really good win. So uh, just don't get greedy if you were taking any kind of uh, short term positions. Right. This is definitely a time where. Uh, you probably want to, if you haven't already, you know, met some of these targets uh, along the way uh, and started to scale out on that. Uh, you could potentially let a little bit more ride. This is not an area where I'd enter Solana, but if you're already in the position, you know, let some ride potentially up to these regions. Otherwise, uh, you know, start probably looking for shorts here. Some of how Magic said, I think a big short opportunity is coming for Solana as well. Uh, Matic, for me, uh, you know, Magic and I kind of have a couple of different areas, uh, you know, that we're looking for. Um, for me, I, I think that we're, you know, probably topped out in a sense here, uh, potentially. And then from here, looking down to these regions uh, as we come into them, if we come into them, right? So this would be my fresh entries for, for Matic. And this is more of a spot hold um, opportunity. And it uh, really doesn't come into play till about 59 cents, 53, and then all the way down to like 32 and this is just for a short term bounce. Uh, once again, potentially even just take it all the way back up to a dollar, uh, which would be, you know, a pretty, pretty substantial little bounce here. So uh, if we get it. So right now we're living back within the range, getting a rejection. Um, so I'm just looking to see if we get these. I'm not entering a short here per se, uh, even though I think that, it, you know, there's definitely legs to it. Uh, but I think that, you know, there's potential to get stopped out pretty, pretty easily. Uh, so I'm looking more so for just fresh entries as, after we get to them, if we get to them. For Cardano, 
nice little push back into the range, right? Uh, where are we sitting at right now? Well, our quarterly pivot right here. Uh, so uh, just below us, one area that I wanted to really see held and still do is 30 cents. Uh, lose 30 cents and uh, potentially we're heading back down uh, pretty substantially, right? So uh, even just on our, our gold pocket, you know, idea here, 0.5 fibs, uh, this was a really big run. So similar to, to a card, uh, Solana, you know, the, the, the pullbacks are pretty decent because you, you know, to get back to your averages are not averages, but to get back to, you know, these regions that, you know, the pullbacks tend to come back to, you know, they're, they're farther away, the farther the price goes. Right. So just back to that gold pocket, you know, you're talking about a 20% pullback, um, which is essentially over 50% of this entire move. Uh, so it's a lot to give back up. So, uh, for me right now, holding on to 30, right where we're at, 30.9 uh, is key in the short term. Otherwise, you know, really pay attention to see if we lose this uh, range low right at 30, it's basically right at 30 cents. So it's just below us. Uh, Doge, probably going to make an update in the group today for Doge. There was another one, though. Oh, yeah, XRP. Just looking at XRP on a, on a sheer range uh, idea here. Um, XRP trades very well. Uh, it really, it really does. I know that, uh, there's a lot of, um, holders that, you know, just will not, uh, which is fine. I mean, you shouldn't be trading, uh, your, your long and midterm holds anyway. So, I mean, if you have a bag of whatever, and you're looking to hold something for years, obviously that's not something you want to trade. Uh, but on your, you know, on that short term, you know, 1% of your portfolio trading, uh, idea here, I mean, uh, XRP respects the levels very well. It doesn't tend to get too many huge moves, but when it does, I mean, they're, they're really big. Um, Otherwise, you get, you know, some really nice, just well-respected flows through the ranges. Um, you know, that we had this little shoot down here, uh, which was looked at like a scam wick of some degree. But, you know, all we did was come back to our quarter two uh, low. We got to bounce off that. If you look over here, you know, it's one of those ideas where you came through and took out a lot of the lows here. Uh, and then we turned it right around. Got a point of control target right above us at 38 cents and then an untapped quarterly pivot uh, above that. Uh, anymore and then we'd be looking up to like 42 so uh, it's just kind of you know cruising through the range here uh, for more upside for me you can see how easily the uh, support and resistance is coming in at this range high uh, breaking 43 cents you know is kind of the gateway to any more substantial upside otherwise from where we are to 42 um, you know is on the table and then potentially just rotate back down so uh, that's where i'd be looking at for xrp let's see Crypto Billy <laughs> pushback game on display. Pushback game. <laughs> I'm not ignoring the chat. You use you use the term uh, pushback on one of them after I'd already made the joke about the bottoms, so it just seemed very natural to segue into that pushback. What did I say? What it. You you said something about pushback at the top of the range on one of these assets, and I was like, "He's just setting them up, man. I'm gonna knock him down if he's just gonna, you know, throw them out there." Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like he's not um, even watching the chat, man. I'm gonna roast it up. It'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. I always come back to it at the end to see what uh what smoke you're giving me. <laughs> oh man, I'm usually pretty good in the chat, but today I'm on one today, so it's fine. I like it. I like it. If he's on moment in our chat, other creators, if you're watching this, be, be aware. Yeah, yeah. I do have a troll account on YouTube. So if you're another creator, I would be I would be uh, careful because that is very uncensored. Crypto Billy asks, percent chance we bottomed? 10, 20, 80 percent. I know it's just a wild, informed guess, but what TA suggests? Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd probably I'd say no still. Um there is no T8 that can give you a percentage that we bought. <laughs> yeah. Um, there kind of is, you know, it's, I mean, it's like a poor, uh, if it's like a poor, if it's like a poor low, we, we kind of, you know, just like, um, so, you know, we have to take context, Billy. So in the last range at 17, five, when we bottomed right back in the summer, when did that move occur? And we kept, we kept repeating this over and over that it occurred on the weekend. CME was closed. It was a poor low. So the odds of us having bottomed was pretty low in my opinion. Right. Um, yeah, I, I would say it, it weighed much more heavily that we hadn't And timing said, you know, more than likely we hadn't bottomed yet and percentage drawdown, all that stuff. Um, in terms of currently, 
You know, I, I don't want to put a percentage on it because I don't think that's fair, but I do agree with CVO that I don't think we have any evidence to say we've bottomed yet. You know, people just want there to be a bottom, in my opinion. Um, and rightfully so. It's been a long bear market. And um, well, I shouldn't say it's been a long one. It's been about the average length so far. And like, you know, that is a long time. It's over a year of nothing but down price. People don't like that. But if you notice, every time we hit a range low, you know, like we did at 17.5 or 25K, how excited are people getting on these bounces? Like, you know, everyone's ready to call bottom every single time there's a bounce. And eventually they're going to be correct. Maybe this is the one. Um, and when that happens, you know, you trade it accordingly. You know, like I've taken longs from the, the lows of this range just to, you know, hedge my bets. And if I'm wrong, I'll cut those positions and I'll let the shorts continue to ride. But um, if we reclaimed $19,000, I think that's the first really major zone that if you get back above 19 to 19,150, um, specifically back above the previous all time high, if you wanted to really be conservative, like that's like 196, depending on the exchange, right? Not 69K. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to 69K. But I think that there's a good chance you could rally as high as 26, 27K, though, and start taking out some of those local highs that we haven't taken in so long. Um, but, you know, that's yet to be seen. That's a lot of information we don't have, uh, especially when a lot of this is dependent. It, so it's coming to light is very dependent on what's going on with the Fed, because look how dead prices until we get into, um, you know, like CPI or like Jerome Powell comes on and just says a few words or they release some minutes from last month, you know, so like w the market is really kind of hanging on by a thread in the sense that, you know, they, they are looking for a reason to be bullish, in my opinion, and people are definitely buying and the Fed is not really too enthused about that. So I think big money does know that. And I do think that it's going to come down to policy at the end of the day. And if this is going to be the first real bear market for Bitcoin, I say real bear market where the money printer is off and we're going to see how this asset, you know, handles itself in a non-inflationary environment. You know, this could be the time, but at the same time, we have our levels and you get back above 20K and we can start, you know, our 19.6 or 20K, whatever you want to call it. And we can start kind of, you know, fiddling with the idea that yeah this this could be a macro bottom we don't you don't want to marry the idea but you know you want to start planning your trades accordingly if uh the setups are there i hope that makes sense like there, there is no way to know necessarily you know unless uh unless you know you have an event like when we were at the top i think cbo will agree we're like when nfts were going crazy and like pictures of people's like dog that they just created on the internet were going for you know thousands and thousands of dollars that that's kind of like the bubble is there and you're like man this is a giant bubble how um, dare you they are amazing items of i'm not saying in a future scam i'm not saying there's no saying like man. did you know people watch the buy bit thing they are uh, just like watches. oh yeah buy bits getting into nfts now oh, um, so if i put a percentage on it crypto billy i'm going to give you the most bullshit percentage ever and i'm going to say 50 50 50 there you go, Coin baby. flip it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think that, I think that you're so far down, though. We've come so far down, and even on this drawdown, that looking for swing shorts isn't necessarily going to be the most high probability trade, probably, unless Bitcoin is going to these disaster numbers like $3,000, you know, um, in which case we're all going to look back and go, damn, I wish I would have shorted 18K or whatever, you know. But that's hindsight, and we don't know that, and you have to trade accordingly. Could you take those shorts from the top of the range and then keep some running? Absolutely. That's up to you. You know, that's all about position management at that point. Um, and that's, uh, that's harder than people think. It sounds very simple on paper because it is basic math, but it's also really hard to keep those positions open and not tinker with them, you know, no matter how confident you are because you're seeing news from not just us, um, you know, you get to Sin City, you go to um, Debate Crypto, you go to Blockchain uh, or BitBoy, around the blockchain, all those guys. Like you're getting all this information and sometimes it's, you know, hey, we're very excited. This is the pump, you know, or this is the dump. And it, it does. It really plays with you. So you kind of have to map out your own plan, write it down so that you enforce it in your own mind and then stick to it and just reinforce that, you know, I'm ready to change my plan when this happens and only when that happens. That's it. Um, so if you think the bottom is in and you're longing, go for it. My question to you would be, make sure you write down, where am I wrong? You know, when do I start to question my own plan? When am I going to cut my losses on this? And if I can't do that, then 
you know, maybe DCAing blindly over the next year or two is just the best way to go. And just saying, I want exposure. I just don't have any other real uh, mechanism for trading. So I'm going to, I'm going to invest on a schedule, right? Um, that's kind of the, the default, the de facto, like, this is what we do in this space. And I think it is because people don't realize that once you start doing more than DCAing like that, you are probably trading and it's harder than you think you're checking your phone in the middle of the night, you know, things like that, all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helps. He's looking at the MAs. Yeah, I, I don't get into like MAs and I don't I don't like comparing too much on past price action. Um, we've seen it this entire move down since about June. Every every week there's a new, oh, this indicator's never been wrong. It's always called the bottom and then the bottom wasn't in, right? So for me, I think the MAs could give you an edge. And if that's what you're using to determine, I think this is the bottom, go for it. Just make sure you know where you're wrong. And once you do that, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. You've already prepared for it. So you're good to go. You're going to protect yourself either way. And it's totally okay to be wrong in this space. I've been wrong. Um, I'm going to be wrong again in the future. You know, I know that. Um, it, it is what it is. So that's uh, the beauty of speculation. If we all knew what was going to happen, we'd all be very, very wealthy. Like no one Do you would remember be when the moon cycles were telling you where the price was going? Fuck, dude. I remember when, yeah, the moon cycles were a big deal. Everyone was on about the moon cycles and they were like, this thing hits at like 80%. And then it went for a whole quarter and it was like a 20% hit rate on these like moon cycle things. And I was like, Don't this is what me. I mean. You know, Don't it's like, it. everyone trading that. the moon cycles for like six months probably got wrecked, man. But then, you know, there's going to be like four to six month stretches where they're just gold. Yeah. You know? So how do you know? I mean, it, it all comes down to, you know, probabilities, it's I guess. The pump, moon, yeah. man. the pump moons are, dude they're leading listen i'm just gonna put it out there you know i will buy into moon cycles the day that Marin altman goes on a date with me i would <laughs> i would uh <laughs> i'll gladly i'll gladly tell her what minute of the day i was born and all that jazz and you know my sign whatever and uh buy into that you know she probably but, tell you the future. Uh, she I, that's oh, right. all you want well. oh, oh, oh oh you're you're an april guy Oh no! She's gonna no, tell no. me what day I'm gonna die. Probably. <laughs> she's gonna tell me about the market. She's just like you're gonna die on this day. And I'm like, that's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Leave Max and I your ledger. We'll take care of the kids. They, yeah, I'm sure you guys will make sure they get their 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 Bitcoin. I'm gonna leave Max nothing but XRP. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Listen, everyone good. in the chat, Magic loves XRP. Always bring it up in front of him. He loves it. <laughs> I like trading it. It's an easy coin to trade. The levels on XRP on a macro scale are so clear. Like that 29 cent level. Dude, so I mean, why wouldn't you trade it? I mean, it was the easiest like 75% I ever made making that trade. Yeah, it I'm very, very simple. Yeah, crypto cracker jack prize, uh, better odds. <laughs> Man, I haven't seen a cracker jack box in a long time, Billy. That's been a minute. I don't even think Max knows what that is. I think he's too I young. Know. Yep. Not. Yeah, we're at that. <laughs> we're at that. Uh, we're at that stage of our life, Billy, where we're gonna say things and people Max's age are gonna go, "I don't even know what that is." Like a cassette tape. I'm sure he's seen one, but he, he probably oh, has never. Cassette tape is Jesus Christ, dude. You'd be <laughs> I'm not an idiot. I had to explain <laughs> to my daughter the other day that there was no internet at one point in my life. And yeah, she was like, dude. what? I was like, yeah, I was around. We didn't have internet. <laughs> I like, I really or watch like a 70s movie or like even not even yeah. 70s, like an 80s or 90s. Did like, she ask if you were walking with dinosaurs? Uh, no, she hasn't asked that yet. She she does ask if I'm old though now. She's like, so are you old? I'm like, I'm 34. So like, I guess, yes, I'm old. But yeah, um, God, that's she doesn't understand hard. that we didn't have cell phones back then. She doesn't understand that she, I, I trade bitcoin on the internet for a living she doesn't understand that that wasn't around um you know like kids are kind of like wrapping their head around this stuff still so there was a time where we just looked for the street lights to come on and that's how we knew when we yeah dude these, like yeah, otherwise we roam the streets freely like without anybody to know like whereabouts <laughs> you know what your parents did they called around to other parents and they go have you seen my kid yeah it. <laughs> if you see my kid tell him to come home for dinner <laughs> or in our case, my dad could whistle really loud. And if we heard that whistle and we knew it was my dad, like we oh, knew we were in trouble. We had to come like home. Kansas life stuff. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you're out there on the open range. 
just a hit listen yeah. for whistles and bullwhip cracks. They were, <laughs> there's, hey man, I, I had a ton of fun growing up in a town of 700 people. It's like lawless out there when you're a kid. You can do whatever you want. You know, ain't nobody gonna stop you. 700, you say, huh? Just like XRP, XRP is seven hundred dollars. Good deal, Max. <laughs> Look at that. It's one dollar per every eight. person in your town. Yeah, <laughs> no that's, that's eight right there. Hey, if XRP goes to seven hundred dollars, um, I'm not gonna Go have on. that much money. Go on, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna say? Uh, I want. I won't have that much money because I would sell way dollars. before then. I won't hold XRP that long. I already know that. I would get rid of it. Um, I'm one, one of those people. Do. Do. I want to hear like I will eat something. I will chop something off. What will you do? Oh, <laughs> you want you want some of that? Nah, man. I'm not. I will chop that. something I off. He, I thought he was going to come through with that. Then if XRP, you know what I will do, that, you know what I, I will, will do is if if XRP hits seven hundred dollars, I'll fly to Dubai and I will pay for you to get a vasectomy okay. so that you don't reproduce. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys going to get Matthew vasectomy? Wow, thank, so thank you. Thank you. Pay for XRP. <laughs> That'd be cool. You know, well, it was like, time to go home before the whooping. That's one hundred percent what that was. Making the world a better place, you know, just just paying for vasectomies. Listen, <laughs> instantly settled vasectomies. Yeah, as fast as you can imagine. Four seconds. Um, <laughs> instantly settles that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instantly settles that. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, if XRP went to seven hundred dollars, I wouldn't even be mad because you know, I I think it's unrealistic for those price targets, and I always tell them. I hope I'm wrong. I hope you get your lottery ticket. That'd be great. Um, I'm not going to be on that lottery ticket, meaning that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be holding like $10,000 worth of XRP for a moon bag. That's not something I'm going to do. And I don't even hold an XRP moon bag. I buy it and sell it when it makes sense and it's convenient. And uh, that's it. And do your research, Magic God. Un <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, there will be people out there that hit those boom cycle coins like lottery tickets. That's going to happen to someone. It could be you. Um, the odds of that happening aren't very good and it's not a sustainable way to invest. So, you know, you have to be diversified. You got to kind of take in the boring road while it's boring. It's the most likely scenario to reach success. Unfortunately, for most people, they don't want to realize that they think that just investing in the high speculative stuff eventually will pay off. And I think that to a degree, you know, there are going to be some people that are going to reap those rewards. But however, um, a large majority of those people will not ever see those rewards because if the most speculative assets were always winners and those people that were investing in them were always winners, people would just buy penny stocks all the time and become very, very wealthy. And that's just not how it works. And, you know, anyone that's ever tried to trade penny stocks or invest in penny stocks knows that, that is that that that's a lose all your money game right there. Like that will that will suck you into an idea and you'll be like, man, this is just gonna change the world. And then when it doesn't pan out, you, uh, you invest it way more. You should have. To differ. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> that's what he what, was doing though, is he was selling he was selling an idea. And I'm not saying that's what XRP is doing, but it's the same thing. When I when I hear people talk like that, that's a certainty and it's gonna happen, they're gonna change that's all I think of. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have exposure to it because like I said, you want exposure to things that have these, these potential for booms, but you can't be overexposed to that. It just doesn't make sense. It should be the smallest allocation of your portfolio because it's the highest risk at the same time, you know? So that, that's, and we talked about this with Kenneth and Kenneth is coming on in a week. So for anyone that's in the chat, all 19 of you that are left, if you didn't see Kenneth Suna's interview last time, he is a guy who started trading and investing and that's all he does. He's 40 and he lives off his investment dividend income and he occasionally trades and he just travels around, you know, whatever part of the United States he's in and he eats hamburgers and makes content. Really smart guy. And we're having him back on a week from tomorrow. Um, and tomorrow I'm having on um, we're having on uh, Demonic Crypto. We're going to talk NFTs and gaming space. So they run their own discord. They have their own NFT project and they're wildly successful. So if you're familiar with uh, Demonic Crypto and Mac Lorden and the Faceless Labs group, they have some really cool stuff. I'm going to bring him on and talk about it. And he's really big into what NFTs can do for gaming. So those are the two guests we have lined up. So tomorrow will be um, will be uh, Alex, Demonic Crypto. He'll be on in the morning, same time. And then we'll have Kenneth on next Thursday. Um, so some really good guests that are coming on. I consider them experts in the field. 
Uh, would like to get more of those types of guests on our show and broaden our horizons a little bit. Cause I know you guys don't want to hear us talk about, you know, levels on Bitcoin and Ethereum and the order flow nonstop all the time. But, uh, you know, it, it's fun to change it up and, and meet other creators. So I think you guys will like that. You know, we'll, we'll make it a good one. Yeah, no, that'd be good. And, um, you know, just one, uh, one thing to touch on too, when, when you were talking about how, you know, XRP or even like Ethereum or any of these like speculative assets, even Bitcoin, right? Like we don't know what they're going to end up being uh, in the future. And one really great example, so everybody likes to bring up the, you know, email, uh, AOL type things, which are really good examples as well. Like AOL was like, you know, at a time, the internet and where is it now, right? It's, uh, it's, it's nowhere to be seen. And the biggest one for me on, on like a tech side is something that was king for quite some time and it got overthrown. Um, and not to say it's Bitcoin or not to say that's going to be Ethereum, but even things like XRP and that's uh, BlackBerry, right? So BlackBerry was like probably one of the, you know, greatest inventions at the time and held a really big place on the tech side. You had to patents and all that, you know, even a lot of the phones and technologies we use today are based off of like IBM technologies. Um or BBM, I mean, and uh, it's, you know, it's it's not around anymore or it's just, you know, it's taken a backseat to many things and it'll probably never be, uh, you know, that top dog ever again. So um, it's just things like that to consider when you're like getting super married to like one of these projects because you just we just don't know where they're going to be. And I mean, um, you know, that's just looking back on like past things that have just had the same opportunities. And even though they've come and gone and XRP, for example, I mean, like magic me, I mean, we've, we've made a lot of our, you know, bigger uh, gains in the past off of those assets in past performances. And um, you know, for anybody that's now like hoping and wishing for that, their return, which it may, it may go back to, you know, $3 and uh, $7 and this and that in the future, but how long in the future is that going to be, you know? So um, yeah. XRP, uh, XRP's charts really simple. And you know, I know we're we're running on time here. I'm going to cover it real quick and show you guys what he's talking about. And we can compare it to Bitcoin because there are some subtle comparisons. However, do not marry the idea blindly and just think that it has to do one thing. So let me get this chart up real quick and we'll we'll go through it in less than three minutes and we'll get out of here. So let's get over to the old XRP chart. So again, guys, on the weekly is where you want to be looking at this, in my opinion. And all you've done is you've taken your two 12-month levels, just like we did with Bitcoin back in the day. So you go to your 12-month chart, and you can see that we have a level here, and we have a level down here. So you have your global range is set. So when this pump took place, this was the major target. And I could go back to my Twitter, and I could find when it was coming into this box. It was starting for me at like $1.80, and I was just, XRP has entered the box. That's all I put on my tweet. To let people know that I was getting out of my position because I was long into XRP. I made a video when it was like right here. And I said it was going to go back to $1.35 and then dump to $0.29. Cents. And when you look at this, this is a giant range, right? And you can see beneath there, there's really not much. So you're really waiting to see what happens with this range. And even before the lawsuit was getting underway, this was kind of the idea that I'd had where could we be getting what's called a partial decline here where there is no longer enough supply to send it back to the low of the range or global support. Uh, potentially. And you, you saw this with Bitcoin and I've got all kinds of stuff on here. I was working on some timing stuff. But when we go to Bitcoin, you can now go to like the 12 month time frame yet again. And we can do the exact same thing that we just did on XRP, but with Bitcoin. And this is something that, you know, I would recommend people do on that as well. And so again, you're looking at this from here and we're just creating a channel and we'll make this the uh, what template do we want to use? I think it's this one. Yeah, it is that one. So now we'll go to the weekly time frame, and we'll take a look. And it looks pretty bad in log. But when you get out of log, you can see that. What did you do? You had created a really nice range. And you could probably move this one up. I think it's supposed to be up. It's supposed to be up here around 3K. This is supposed to be like about right here. So I may have missed that level. But this is the range you're looking at, right? So you can see you've got your 3K low, your 14K high. And then you didn't quite come back to the low of the range. You got pretty close. You just filled in some inefficiencies. So when you come over to XRP, you've got a very similar setup. That's why I said there is a very bullish setup. You've got this uh, global bat pattern that's on display here as well, which is a bullish reversal, giving you the invalidation of X, which is all the way down here at like 11 cents, which stinks when you think about it. Because that's a pretty big drawdown. Um, you know, the only thing that I think people have to understand 
is when you're looking at something like this, you can not only marry one idea, kind of like CVO is saying, you have to look at this objectively and say, okay, I've got a really nice trading range here and I should be willing to sell the top and buy the bottoms of it. So I'm willing to buy here, which was the global POC at the time at about you know 29 cents, um, big support, basically coming back and back testing this accumulation range right here. If lost, I would expect to see, you know, 19, 17, 14 cents. And if you lose 14 cents, which that's this low right here, right? You know, this is a problem. You cannot give this region of the chart up. So it's very important that XRP does get going here. And when does this rally become real? Probably a little above 60 cents. Uh, realistically, the global TPO and point of control is a dollar and nine cents. And that's why I gave that target on Sin City the other week. When they were asking, you know, let's say XRP wins the lawsuit, where does XRP go tomorrow? Um, you know, in the in the long term, probably higher than a dollar nine, but in the short term, short to medium term, you know, you have a dollar nine probably on deck. Um, you know, I think that would be the area that you'd want it to go to and reclaim, and that would put you in position for this to be that partial decline, higher low, whatever you want to call it. Some people are calling it a cup and handle, which technically it can't be a handle because way too deep of a retracement. Um, but then you are looking at this as this is a multi-year range, multi-year range, getting expansion. You know, what you're missing is you are missing the industry and the market confirming that this, this move could be underway. So that's that's just it. If they turn the money printers back on or we enter a new bull phase, you know, dollars going to zero, whatever you want to, however you need to look at it. And this is breaking up and getting above these levels. You know, as much as I like to hate on the cult because I just don't care for cult like mentalities, if you don't think I'm not going to trade this to the upside, I will gladly trade it to the upside, just like I'll gladly trade it to the downside, right? Like I was long right here from 33 cents. I longed it up to 50, right? I got out. You've got a really nice opportunity. Again, you've got some really key lows that you could put a stop loss below right here. And you could just say, if we lose this low, we're probably heading all the way to 19 cents. I'm not interested in holding another 50% drawdown or 40% or whatever that is. So you've got a stop loss and now you're targeting again, that quarter one low. And I believe your quarter one low is like 55 cents, something right in here. If I recall, this is the Q1 low. Yeah, 54 cents on Bitstamp. So you're just targeting the range. You've got a really clear range to trade. And it's a big range right here. This is all you're doing. You're just trading this range until it breaks to here. Or we come back up to like the yearly open and maybe a dollar over time. That's all you're looking to do with this. You know, if you're a trader, that is, if you're not a trader and you're an investor, then yeah, you're watching this and you're saying, man, if we can clear the EQ of this in that quarter one low right here, you know, you can see anytime you're above this level of the chart, where do you go? Well, the short of it is to at least about a dollar and 35 up to as high as a dollar 96, right? So, you want to see this level of the chart and keep it pretty objective and say, okay, what are we doing here? You know, what, what makes sense for me as an investor? Do I have invalidation? Where's my risk? Um, you know, that's all you're doing. And if you can do that, and this is a trading channel, we're not an investing channel per se. So that's why I'm going over the trading scenario, you know, blindly holding an asset like this is, is very speculative though, because you didn't make an all time high in the last cycle. And a lot of people will say it's because of the lawsuit. I don't know that it was. This was always going to be the take profit for me. Um, and I said, even if it got through this, the highest I really had planned for it was maybe 250. And I think I even used that for one of my clickbait titles back in like 2020, um, you know, into 2021. So it is one of those where it's like, yeah, this could, this could absolutely rip to the upside. Do I think it's going to be $100? No. Um, I think maximum, if you measured this based on percentage, like, and again, I did this with the DXY and I did a video on this and I got taken down, of course, by TikTok. Um, it was a five part series. All four parts are still up. It was a macro breakdown. And all you're doing is you're just measuring percentage and saying, where can this go? And you can see it, it wants to take you as high as like 20 bucks. And that's the technical move. No market cap, no news, anything. That's the technical move. If this range is valid and it expands to the upside. I don't necessarily know that I would agree with that. That again is a logarithmic measurement. And so if you were to measure it in linear scale, it gives you a little bit different picture. So to me, it's going to depend on the context and the climate that's going on. You know, what's really going on with the economy? Because this just takes you back closer to your all-time high, which I think is much more realistic. However, you know, we don't always get realistic. So maybe it does make a larger move. It's just, I think the environment has to be right for that. There's got to be a hype cycle 
Um, I really do think that I don't think utility is actually something that will drive price higher because generally as things are utilized, they become cheaper, right? So it doesn't make sense to me when people say utility arguments, I go, all you're going to do is create more competition for yourself and your services have to become cheaper. So it, the asset itself should follow suit in that regard. But, you know, we've been wrong before. It's all speculation. We can all argue about it, but none of us actually know it. They're all just, you know speculative arguments based on how we probably feel about something, which is the wrong, you know, way to go about investing and trading in my opinion. So for me, very simple range between 33 cents right now and 54 cents traded accordingly. You break 33 cents, you're probably heading down to 19, in my opinion, 19 cents is on deck. Um, and maybe even a little bit lower than that. That's it. And then break 54 cents i think your first real target is probably going to be the yearly open at like 83. i actually don't know where the yearly pivot is on this one i know cvo's definitely got it on his chart somewhere but i have not looked at it so i'm going to yeah look at that your yearly pivot is literally the quarter one low that we mapped out so you break above this level this little box that we had mapped off earlier saying if you get back above this it's good i think you have some significant upside you know um lots of things confirming that but until then you have a nice range and it's a big range. And then this is the last thing I'll say before I cut myself off. But this range, you know, CVO has talked about this trading range. It's a 60% range, you know, no leverage needed for that, right? So uh, do with that information what you will. That's the beauty of altcoins though, because the same range on Bitcoin is probably only like 20%. Maybe, maybe if, if we're lucky, it's 20%. But um, that's all I've got. OC says H bar to the moon. Um like I said, I never wish any bad against any projects. I hope all the projects moon. I just know it's not realistic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, that lawsuit too, man, like just to finish it off too, is that like, you know, everybody looks to the lawsuit as to why XRP didn't make a new all time high, but looking at that is just as technical as you can get. And one argument I always bring up is that Litecoin didn't go through a lawsuit and had the same issue, right? They yeah. didn't come up, you know, tagged close to the all time high, but didn't make a new all time high. Yeah, things like, you know, tr which I think Litecoin is probably the only one that has major legs uh, compared, but you have things like Tron and Neo and like all those coins from back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Bitcoin Cash, baby. Bitcoin Cash, too. But Litecoin is one that I think is going to be around for and could, could be wrong, of course. But like, I think that one is just like a, you know, a very good example of like Litecoin and, and XRP. I think XLM, too, right? XLM might not have made a new all time high either. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe it did. I don't remember. Yeah. I didn't yeah. trade XLM too much. I traded it to like a 24 cent back test on like the downtrend. And then I didn't trade it after that. And what do I think about Algo? Uh, Justin, I, I don't know anything right. about Algo to, to tell you what I think about it. I did cover it in yesterday's live stream. Uh, I went over the coins that I've been buying and I did buy Algo. And it's one that I chart and it's back in my buy zone. It was a uh, buy zone for me for months has been sub 21 cents down to 15 cents. Um, and I posted on my Twitter as well when we hit the box so that everybody knows that it's reached my buy zone. And that's a area on the chart I've been looking for since, you know, almost the beginning of 2022. I think it was about quarter two when I was like, okay, I think this is probably the most likely landing spot. And it made me wait almost a full year. Right. So, um, I don't know anything about Algo. Uh, I actually covered Algo on my old channel before it got banned. It was one of my most popular videos. I did a full breakdown on the chart and I was long on it saying get long on it about 25 cents. Um, and I got some of the most hate because I told them that it wasn't going to go to $5. And because people were in the comments saying it's going to five bucks, 10 bucks. And I said, no, it's probably not. It's probably going to like a dollar to $2. And that's where I'm getting out. And dude, the amount of hate that I got. And that's where I knew that those targets would probably be valid. <laughs> it's, it's like, so like, I honestly don't care what any of these coins do, Justin. I'll be upfront with you. I, I couldn't care less what they do. I'm only in this market to take the money from those projects and trade them because I've been through a few cycles. I've seen what this market is predominantly comprised of. And it's just like the stock market. When people pick individual stocks, it's not as easy as you think. It is now with all the blue chip companies like, oh, I'll just invest in Apple, this and that, Tesla. Well, see what's happening now. We're getting that great, you know, deleveraging from the stock market even. But individual stock picking, you would be surprised how bad people are at that. The vast majority of people, oh, I did my research, this company's gonna be great. No, you've probably you're probably not gonna be successful at that venture, regardless of the amount of research you do, um, unfortunately. Um, you got to like follow money and how it moves through sectors in most cases, in my opinion, in the stock market, if you're going to go that route of trading and not investing. And even in investing, it's a huge risk because some of these companies just never take off or the technology becomes outdated before it's ready. As CBO is pointing out, you know, like 
they could have this great idea and then someone could come along and be like, I've got a better idea, you know, and that's how fast technology is evolving. So it's always a little bit of a risk with new companies and new technology because that technology breeds technology. They, I think I can't remember who said that, but it's very, very true. So anything in tech is always kind of like, yeah, when, when the market's booming and they're printing money, yeah, you can just throw a fucking dart at the board and, and make money at that point. But um, that doesn't make a person a good investor. It just means you're a good investor if you take profits, you know, and you pay yourself a little bit. But, you know, opinions, I guess, semantics at that point. So, um, well, we've been on here for an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> I've got about four to six miles to go get in uh, on a run here. And uh, I think we've been droning on long enough about cryptos and charts and investing. Uh, just remember tomorrow, NFT guy and gaming guy, as if you're into GameFi at all, will be Alex. And then next Thursday, we'll have Kenneth back on. And he is a stock guy. And he goes through investing basics for people that want to get into diversification. So very simple tips and tricks from him to help you get involved in um, other companies if you want to, or other sectors of the market. Perfect. Exactly. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just finish it off with, uh, if anybody's interested, we do have uh, the leading crypto.io website uh, information down below. Uh, you can join our discord here if you're interested. Uh, also, you can come down. We are going to offer the half off the first month for the memberships uh, for the rest of January. Uh, so you can just come down and click on membership plan and uh, choose the monthly one. And in there, put in code, which this is in our information below as well. Uh, just put in code BTC22, uh, and that'll give you half off in the first month. And tonight, uh, we're doing a potential classroom uh, setting instead of our members-only market update for Wednesday. But every Wednesday and Sunday night, we do host uh, members-only market updates. Sunday's a big one as the weekly close comes to an end. Uh, and there's generally not too much uh, too many updates over the weekend, but uh, that'll be tonight. Um, so if you're interested in being a part of that, you can come through here and uh, become a member. Otherwise, like I said, there's a free portion as well. You can come in there, ask questions, things of that nature. Uh, and if that is uh, not something you're into, then you can just catch us here tomorrow again, 10 a.m. Eastern uh, with our guests. Um, and aside from that, I think that's all we got. So enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Until then, cheers, everybody.